Hi, everybody. Welcome to June 22nd, 2018 edition of Colorado Winsett Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. I'm Dominic Kazuti. Thank you very much for joining us. Let's get a quick take on the Colorado Secretary of State's office announcing this week that over half a million ballots have been turned in so far. I think at Friday count was right around 600,000 and over 138,000 of them are from unaffiliated voters. Patty Calhoun from Westward, we have talked about the primary on the main show. Here's our chance to talk about the power of the unaffiliated voter. On June 26, just a few days from now, are we going to see any upsets due to these unaffiliated voters? Now, uh, well, because it's the first one, it's record amounts because it's the first one, but 120, 138,000 about so far, it's nothing to sneeze at. No, and it's really significant given the fact that there are more unaffiliated voters than Republicans or Democrats, but still, this is pretty big when none of them supposedly have a, a dog in the race. We all, we've already, it's the exact same number of ballots have been turned in on the Republican side and the Democrat side. Yesterday was off 207,000 uh, on both. And with the unaffiliated, you have to figure, you have to wonder, are they going to just jump in to see who they can screw with? Are they going to find candidates they really care about? Are they disgruntled Republicans, disgruntled Democrats who still will go with their party. It's way too early to tell, I think, but that's what we're going to spend all next week parsing is just how did those unaffiliated votes go? And they could swing it in a number of races. David Copel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. We've heard some reports about, uh, I think it was 20% uh, in Pueblo County, 20% of the unaffiliated votes that came in, they put in both ballots, which negates both uh, uh, votes. And again, Lynn Barros would want me to remind you, if you're seeing this, if you have yet to vote as an unaffiliated voter, you, want to, you could only vote in one, Republicans or Democrats, not two. David, uh, is it going to be more about the, the folks that didn't do it the right way, or is it folks about swaying certain races? Um, well, I'm not sure if, it's, if that 20% from Pueblo is holding up. I mean, I think they've okay. had some counting problems, so it might not have been as, as bad as that. Uh, you're going to have all, all those reasons. Some, some people might be, say, Republican-leaning unaffiliated, but they vote in the Democratic primary, uh, maybe to try to get the weakest candidate uh, chosen. Um, others are may actually be crossovers. I mean, Do Donald Trump won the Republican primaries in part because of other states that allowed unaffiliateds to vote. And there were absolutely uh, people who, you know, had, had been Obama unaffiliateds, but they'd been Obama and Clinton voters in the past. And they came over and they, they liked him because he was, he was different from other Republicans and, and had something uh, that appealed to them. I, I think it's wrong. I think if you want to choose who the head of the your party's candidate is be one of the be in the party. In, in for example, in, in Argentine soccer, the you can join a club as a supporter. Like you know, you're I support this team. I'm, I'm a socio. You sign up. You pay a fee, and you're you're then a member of the club. And actually, the the supporters of that club are the ones who elect the general manager uh, of the team. Now, if you care so much about a team that you'll pay some money and and do it, then you can become a voter. But if you're like saying, well, I don't know, I, I, I kind of I don't like any of the teams, uh, so I'm not going to uh, join any of them, but I want to vote uh, in some team's election for who the general manager would be, I don't think you should be in there. Have, have the election decided by the people who want to be in the group and, and publicly affiliate themselves with the group in the first place. Where else but Colorado Inside Out are you going to get a great comparison between the primary election in Colorado and Argentine soccer? Nowhere but Colorado Inside Out. Everybody, you're welcome. <laughs> Eric Sonneman, political analyst. Uh, what, what are we going to be talking about next Wednesday as the effect of the unaffiliated votes in this year's primary being the very first one to participate in? Well, before I get to next Wednesday, I need to deal with Argentinian soccer. <laughs> I'm not sure that is the right metaphor to use at this particular time, <laughs> as they have stunk up the World Cup tournament so far. Uh, I'm That's not the National Association, not the club. I, I, I understand, but I'm not sure I'd be really holding Argentinian soccer up uh, at, at, at this particular point in time. I will, uh, more to the point, will disagree with David on substance too. I think this is a good law. Anything that has the potential, we'll see if it has the reality and. This is a test tube experiment in year one, and we, you have to judge something over the course of 10 or 15 or 20 years. But anything that has the potential to drive politics a little bit more to the center so that it is not just the hardcore right-wing base of one party and the hardcore left-wing base of another party picking nominees, I think is positive. Credit to Ken Theory and a whole lot of other people who, uh, who brought these propositions about uh, two years ago. In terms of what we're talking about Wednesday morning, Dominic, 
the trick, uh, there are two tricks here. Number one is there's a whole assumption going into this race that independents are going to be a more monolithic vote than Democratic registrants or Republican registrants are going to be. I'm not sure I completely buy into that. Let's, t let's go on the Democratic side, and I think more unaffiliated from what I've seen are voting the Democratic ballot, probably because it's the more interesting uh, uh, governor's primary. Uh, I think Mike Johnston is counting and banking a lot on something of a monolithic vote in, or at least a huge vote in his direction. We'll see, but I think uh, there's an opportunity that a whole lot of particularly unaffiliated women do the gender thing and vote for Kerry Kennedy. I think there's appeal there. So I'm not sure there's going to be a more of a block vote among them than there are among party adherents. Secondly, given the lack of media resources around, the Denver Post being a shell of itself, we're not going to have exit polling. So it's all going to be supposition, even on Wednesday morning. You're not going to know how did unaffiliateds break in the Democratic primary versus how did Democrats break. That's going to take a whole lot of time and a whole lot of conjecture to figure out because you don't have any exit polls that are going to illuminate that right away. Natasha Gardner, Article Z editor, 5280. Um, you don't need to pick who's going to win, but I guess pick, a, if you would, a degree of impact that uh, unaffiliates will make in this very first primary they can uh, vote in. Well, I'm going to be a bit cagey on that because I think it depends on the race. I think for the larger statewide races, it may not just because of the volume of votes that mm -hmm. will be um, in the, that mm -hmm. pool. But for some of the smaller state um, house races, this could be a determining factor. And it'll be interesting to see how it impacts campaigns going forward. I mean, I think Prop 108 has been interesting to say, OK, what if? What happens now? But now we're looking at, OK, what happens as a result of this? This is going to change the way that campaigns are run in the state from the moment that a candidate announces that they're running through the primary and up to the general election. And um, what it really is going to change is how much money they have to put up up front before that primary to get their vote, uh, or to get their message out to that, that pool of unaffiliated voters. It will also be interesting to see if some of the, if that huge pool of unaffiliated voters, which is more than 1.2 million in the state right now, which is more, it's, it's the largest um, group of active voters, if they remain unaffiliated or if participating in the primary actually pushes them in one direction or another and says, OK, actually, I do align more with this party than the other. I don't need to do this going forward. So I think there's a lot of unknowns that is going to really make politics interesting in the next few years as a result of this one change. And I also owe Natasha an apology at the, on the show. We talked about you did a Say Something Nice, World Cup Soccer, and the fans from Japan who cleaned up. I had, saw, I had seen the Senegal, uh, Senegalese fans clean up, so I thought, well, no, it wasn't Japan or Senegalese. It was both. So Natasha was absolutely right. Both the fans from Japan and Senegal were very uh, um, conscientious fans in the World Cup. So it was great to see. My apologies. And we'll, That's beautiful. Yeah, th this might get to at least, yeah, <laughs> dozens of viewers are going to see this apology. So you're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time we have for CIO post game and Mike Didini. Let Lewis come and tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Kazuti. Thanks for watching.